Welcome to Spiritual Invitation. My name is Carla Augustine and I'm inviting you to explore spirituality. Joining me today is Lisa G. Samia and she has a remarkable story to share about having faith and hope through cancer. Lisa is author of the book, Don't Be Afraid of 50, The 12-Step Process to Turning 50. She's also a Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association Award winner in essay and poetry. Lisa is a certified life strategy coach for all ages, especially for individuals looking to facilitate and sustain positive changes in their lives. In addition, she helps with stress management coaching. Lisa, welcome to Spiritual Invitation. It's Thank so nice you. to finally meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank I'm you for so having us. Oh, I'm so happy you came and thank you for driving all this way. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Um, listen, before we get into your story, mm -hmm. I just want to talk a little bit about your book. What prompted you to write it? Well, that's such an interesting story in itself. Um, I had always wanted to write my whole life. It was the only thing that I really, really loved to do. And I did it as a young person. I did it in high school and college. But for whatever reason, I never pursued it. Mm -hmm. I just figured, got busy in the world and was doing other things. Professionally, I uh, work in professional uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. And I just never really thought that much about it. But I always loved it. It was calling It you. was calling. Mm -hmm. And I saw that I was coming at, at a turning point in my life turning 50 and I'm sitting in my cube and I'm working and I'm saying to myself there has to there, there has to be more than this I'm going to give it a try so that's when the ideas that came to me to try to sit and write don't be afraid of 50 because I figured if I was trying to find my voice and to move on to other things perhaps there were other people out in the world I could help as well you could benefit them yes too. and that was the impetus for the story all right well thank you I, I like to uh, ask each guest, mm -hmm. how is it that you started on your spiritual journey? I've always been spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, I was brought up uh, in that type of household, uh, but it was a life crisis that came my way in November of 2012 that really enhanced my spiritual um, experience. Okay, so would you share with us um, what is it that happened? In November of 2012, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And it was obviously very devastating to hear mm -hmm. you know, that news. And I was always a vegetarian. I was very active. I didn't smoke. And the doctor actually told me, well, Lisa, you've done everything right. And I said, but then why? Then why? But mm -hmm. you got cancer. Mm -hmm. it, it's life, it happens. And because of that, it, it, just, it just seemed to me so incredulous to myself and you know, to all my family members and of course you know, to my husband. But I, I kept shrugging my shoulders and I said, they said I did everything right. I you know, tried to live life the way the guidelines tell you and embrace that and I still got cancer. And you still, right. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to, people try to understand the reason, and it's like, we don't. We don't understand this. We don't understand this, it. You know, no, fully. That's correct. There's so much we don't know. That's correct. So you heard the words that, mm -hmm. I mean, most of us live in fear mm -hmm. of ever hearing, you have cancer. So mm -hmm. you heard that. How did you feel with that? Devastated. Mm -hmm. Completely devastated. Mm -hmm. Um the doctors told me, especially um, since too, you were living such a such a healthy, healthy lifestyle. lifestyle. Yeah, devastated. Mm -hmm. Fear of my life, mm -hmm. fear of what it was, mm -hmm. what was going to change, fear of the treatment, fear of the surgeries, fear. It was gripping. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. And what were they telling you as far as what the course of treatment would be? Between my radiologist and breast surgeon and, and the myriad of, of doctors that are assigned your case, which were all fabulous and wonderful because it you know, helped to make me so well now, mm -hmm. they were telling me a mastectomy, um, then a partial reconstruction after mastectomy, um, then uh, an implant, and then uh, radiation and chemotherapy 
and then finally another surgery to final reconstruction. Okay, so we so were this looking is, at oh this, yeah. is, this is yeah this was not not that cancer is ever simple but this was this is a long this was a long, long recovery yeah. that correct. they were suggesting That's for correct. you. Mm -hmm. All right then so what happened uh, while you were waiting for your first chemo treatment? Well my parents had come to visit me uh, from out west uh, over Christmas time. I had my surgery in December 2012 so they came to help me convalesce. And what happened was about a week or two before they were getting ready to go back to Las Vegas, my mother came into my room and she held out her hand and she had this little cellophane package and in it were these little tiny pieces of wood. And so I, and she gave it to me and she says, remember your faith. And again, this was before the chemotherapy. Yes, sure. correct. So. I says, Mom, what is this? And she had proceeded to tell me that about 10 years ago, when her and my father and friends had been visiting the Holy Land in Turkey, the tour guide had, had taken them to the home of where they believe the Blessed Mother was residing before she ascended into heaven. Again, if, if that's what you, if that's your faith base. Okay? Sure. So my mother saw the house, and then she saw a tree right outside the house. So she told me, she says, well, if that's her house, that must be her tree. Maybe she stood under that tree in the hot summer day. Mm -hmm. So she's got my dad's pen knife, and she scraped off little pieces of wood. Isn't and she put it in a cellophane bag, and a portion of it is what she gave me. And she says, remember your faith. I put the little cellophane in my jewelry box, because it was, you know, small. And they left. And now the time is approaching, you know, for the chemo. Now, do you have it with you? I actually do. do I you? can so you, show you. You carry it with you. I do. I carry it no with me everywhere. What? It's cellophane and May inside, I for a of second? course, of course, and little pressed pieces of wood and slivers. Oh, that's just wonderful! Thank what you. a what a treasure mm -hmm. that is. And that goes with me everywhere. Oh, I can imagine everywhere. it does. Now, can we just talk about your mother for a second? Of course. Because I've never met her, but she mm -hmm. seems like a really cool lady. She's I mean, wonderful. Did she? think of this while she was there and for a specific reason or was she thinking oh this might come in handy someday to have this bark you know did I you? I'm not really sure mm -hmm. but I'm thinking that knowing my mom because she is very devout in her faith okay. which she has passed on to all of us my siblings myself included of course that this was just part of something that she would have done thinking that if the Blessed Mother had resided there, right. this would bring her closer to her oh, in, sure. in that respect. So I think that that was kind of her thinking, not actually thinking that it would be to give to a sick family member along down the line. She wasn't even thinking that. No. It was just, she probably was just thrilled, thrilled that, that, to be there. Yeah. It was just, I want to bring a piece of this be, home with me. Exactly. I'm going to bring a piece oh, of the Blessed that's, Mother. Oh, that's, yeah. wonder, that's yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Oh, that's Thank wonderful. Okay, and uh, and so then tell us the rest. What, what so was So what happened with that? was um, I had had the the cellophane, you know, this mm -hmm. in my jewelry box, and as I was home recovering, getting ready to have my first chemo uh, appointment, not not mm -hmm. the drip, but to meet the oncologist, you know, prior and to discuss things, I kept going over to the jewelry box and I kept lifting the lid. And of all the things that are in the jewelry box, all our little treasures that glitter and gold and shine in the light and all how pretty this is and look at this gemstone, I didn't see any of it. All I saw was the, that wrapped piece of cellophane. Mm -hmm. And I took it out and I would squeeze it and I would start praying to the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. I was just so afraid and the chemo and I was already in such discomfort from the surgery okay. so um, even though medication and mm -hmm. it was a big surgery mm -hmm. so I take it out I keep praying and I put it back and so here is the day now this is a Friday that my husband and I were going to the cancer center to have our first 
meeting with the oncologist. I had met him prior, obviously, to everything, mm -hmm. knowing that I would meet up with him again after I had the surgery to start the chemo. So there's your, you know, the trail. So we pull up in the parking lot. I was terrified. Oh, of course. I reached into my pocketbook. And I pulled out the wood. You were really wood. trusting mm -hmm. this, weren't you? I was praying so much. And I just stood there in the lot and I said, Blessed Mother, help me. Help I'm, me. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And I asked my grandmother to mm -hmm. help me. Mm -hmm. was very strong and very devoted to the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. And then right as I turned to go in, I said, God, help me. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask. I said, God, help me. Mm -hmm. This is what I want. Yeah. Please. Please. Mm -hmm. I go in with my husband. We sit down. I meet with the oncologist. The oncologist tells me, well, you know, Lisa, we had decided we were going to have eight chemotherapy treatments. I think you're only going to need four. Oh. Holy <laughs> cow. I jumped out of the chair. Yeah. <laughs> I was thrilled. Again, that just meant that everything was going to be shortened, and I'd be well sooner. I was so excited. See your prayers. I, my pra I, I said, Jim, I said, prayers are answered. Answer. <laughs> Only four chemotherapies. It was thrilling. And so we, we had set the appointment for the chemo drip the following Friday. I'll see you next Friday for your first one. Only four. Hip, hip, hooray. Get in the car, drive home. I call all my family and friends. Guess what? Guess what? I only need four treatments. Well, everybody's celebrating. Did you tell your mother the word? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes, Mom, it worked. Look, it worked. <laughs> then that following Tuesday, I'm getting out of my car, and my cell phone rings. And it was my breast surgeon's nurse. And she says, you know, Lisa, we just got this test result. And... I'm going to send it to your oncologist. He really needs to see that. And of course, like a little nervous. And, oh, no, it's good. It's good. So without my asking further, my assumption was that it was the fact that I only need four treatments. Four, right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying she, to myself, you're behind the times. Right, I already just knew. It out. Right. I'm like, I'm way ahead. <laughs> I'm home Wednesday from work. I was resting at home and um, wasn't feeling well. I think it was, again, the fear and discomfort. And it's my oncologist. And he says, you know, Lisa, um, looking at this uh, test result, and you know, uh, hmm, you know, we, we have a certain number scale for when we look at test results, who needs chemotherapy and who doesn't. And it's, it's, it's on a number scale. Like, you know, 18 is borderline. Anything above a 20, you're going to need the chemotherapy. There'll be a better chance of reoccurring. Mm -hmm. Anything under 18, you know, you, you don't need the chemotherapy. I, and I'm listening, not knowing where he's going, where with this. He's going because I don't <laughs> understand. I'm right. just listening. And uh, he said, you came in at a 13. Um, oh. You're not going to need chemotherapy. We're canceling your appointment. <laughs> I said, what? He says, you don't need it. And he says, so I'm going to call Dr. So-and-so to get you started to have this next surgery so you can have your radiation. So, and I was, couldn't believe what I heard. And he says, well, we don't ever really get to make these mm. types of phone calls. They don't make that often. They don't make it. No, no. no. And he had no he, answer, did he? No, yeah, no, no. no Just reason. that the Just, test result, it, that's it, all they go two by, days yeah. before my drip. Mm. Two days before every doctor had told me you're going to. Mm -hmm. I slid off the bed. Oh. And I got on my knees, mm -hmm. and I said my prayers of thanks. Mm -hmm. And Carla, in that moment, when the doctor said, you don't need chemotherapy, I believed I received a blessing, mm -hmm. that my prayers had been answered, mm -hmm. and that I also knew, and what I sensed, and I still do, and I'm very grateful for that, is that because that was removed from my treatment, because I was made well sooner, mm -hmm. that I had a responsibility to come out and to tell my story and to tell people to have hope and faith 
and that no matter mm -hmm. what, and no matter what the doctors are telling you, no matter what is going on, whether it's a medical crisis, you know, a job crisis, whatever it is is assailing you in your life, to have hope and to have faith and to never, ever, ever give up. Don't give up. Ever. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know. You don't know. No. And no. prayer is so powerful. I it mean, is. Wh whoever you believe in. That's correct. Individual whatever deity. In, if, correct. If, if, exactly. So wherever it is, and even our deceased loved ones, mm -hmm. we're reaching out to them That's and right. praying to them. That's right. And asking for their help. But but reach out and and ask and pray for what it is that you want. That's and, right. and And let um, angels or Mother Mary or a deceased loved one Whatever or your God, That's right. let them know how you're feeling, that That's you're right. afraid. And, and, oh, and, 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 and was I ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yes, say that you're because very I, honest I, can, about that. I can really feel that, you know, mm -hmm. but I can also feel the joy of when I knew that I had received that news. You received it. And, and it, that I was going to so, live my life to the to a, a different level now, a more spiritual level even, mm -hmm. but that my mission and, and part of my devotion and my reason for being here is to come out and help other people. That's really all I want right. to do. It's tell my story of whoever wants to hear me speak about this. And, well, I'm so glad and you're here sharing you. it. Thank I you. really am because it is Thank wonderful you. and it is the idea of having hope, like That's you right. say, That's and right. keeping the faith, which it's easy enough to say when we're not going through something. That's you know, And then all of a sudden, boom, when we find ourselves in a situation, it's like, Oh yeah, I, I I tell other people keep up the faith and the hope. How am I going to? Do, but now I'm, yeah. I, I'm empowered it, now, now. Yeah, yeah right. How am I going now. to do yeah. this for myself? Yeah, exactly. uh, so it it was like a divine intervention. It was. Do you feel it that? Was. Yeah, I, yeah. I do. Okay. I do. And again, mm -hmm. that's my take on it. Mm -hmm. That was my sense sure. of it. Sure. It could be. It was just a late test result. What? that was just not in the cards for me to have mm -hmm. that treatment. But it just seemed that the way things had aligned themselves sure. in the universe during that time to have a positive outcome, mm -hmm. to me, just just spoke volumes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I am. And, it's, and it sounds like, too, um, holding on to your pieces of wood, it, you just were developing such a connection. Yes. To Mother Mary that's right. and to the energy of that of that's that right. area that your that your mom had visited. That's right. Completely. Now, Lisa, what do you think it is? Um, so many people, uh, when they do have critical events in their lives, like battling an illness, uh, um, tend to go down the path of exploring uh, spirituality, mm. and you know we hear about that. And why do you think that is? I think when we're tested like mm -hmm. this. I think it tests our resolve, mm -hmm. and it, it tests our belief. And I think that when our mortality is exposed, it's very frightening. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably the reason that a lot of people would go down that path. Mm -hmm. Kind of reaching out. Reaching out for answers. Reaching and out for answers and, and for help also exactly. to, to kind of go exactly. to the... Um, the spiritual world yeah, yeah. Uh, for help with that. Yep, I agree. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the essay. You yes. won an award on that. Thank you, I yes. did. Yes, yes, thank you. Connecticut Authors and Publishers mm -hmm. Association, uh, second place for personal essay 2013-2014. Mm -hmm. uh, it was published in um, April of 2014. The essay was my story, my tiny pieces of wood. I See, wrote this the is story. what, what this you're is, sharing with this, us today. That's is, what you. This is you... the story. This is exactly mm -hmm. the story, how it happened and everything that that I went through. And again, I wrote it for the same reason that I'm sitting here, mm -hmm. is so that it could help other people to understand that again, faith and hope and prayer, it's there. Mm -hmm. It works. We should call on it and be faithful. And I wrote it, again, my love of writing. And, and I felt like, okay, here it is now. I've been, I'm on the road to recovery. What am I going to do? How am I going to reach people? Mm -hmm. what, what do I have 
What gift do I have that I can give to share this with? It was always right in front of me. My there you writing. go. You have this great story. Yeah. It was the perfect the time story. to start writing. I wrote the story, mm -hmm. submitted it, and, and again, um, I was very fortunate. It won the award. It's published. And it's, it's just wonderful because it, it, when I think about it, when I reread it, you know, that time when the oncologist called and said, you don't need the chemotherapy, it brings me back to a very centered place. Mm -hmm. that, that place that reminds me again of the responsibility because I was given the gift of wellness. I was made well sooner than any of the doctors had thought mm. that that was my responsibility as, as a divine intervention, gave me the gift of life to reach out and help other people in whatever way I can. Oh, I'm so glad that you are. Thank you, thank you. Uh, tell us about your life-changing event this past summer. I had just finished uh, my last uh, reconstructive surgery in mm -hmm. April of 2014. I am uh, in remission and cancer-free. Congratulations. And thank you. That's and um, my father had uh, open uh, heart valve replacement surgery uh, about two months after I had my last surgery. Mm -hmm. And he had, a bar, he had a bad heart for most of his adult life. He was 82 years old, but he had the spirit and joy of a 25-year-old. His voice was as young as, uh, as, as a college boy. He had such a great gift and capacity for compassion and love. And unfortunately, uh, he did not survive this surgery, and we lost him on uh, July 25th. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Um, my, my feelings of what had happened in the loss of my father has only enhanced for me my drive and wanting to mm -hmm. reach out and help other people. Again, it only reinforced it because he had such a great natural ability to give compassion. He was probably the most compassionate person, even though he was my father, I'd ever known in my life. And he did it as easily as he drew breath. Mm. And it was never, what is it that I can take from you? But it was always, what can I give you? Mm -hmm. And I believe that that gift was passed to me. So in my, oh, in my nice. coming out mm -hmm. and telling the story, I feel that in this way, I can reach more people through him and keeping his spirit and his gifts mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. And so that event, that life-altering, devastating event, um, has just given me more resolve. I, I thought I knew, I thought I knew what pain was, and I thought I knew what trauma was, having gone through the of cancer. Um, but it was nothing compared to what happened when I lost my it's father. Different, yes. It was a yes, different, a, different, a different tremendous. pain because it yeah. is final. Yes, I, it is. yes, you it have is. lost them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm fortunate. I want to share one quick story with mm -hmm. you. The day before he had his surgery, I was speaking with him on the phone, and he said to me, he said, you know what, Lisa? I said, what? He said, I just want to tell you something. And I go, okay. One of these days, I said, yes. He goes, one of these days, that phone's going to ring at home, you know, and that's going to be it. I oh. said, well, what do you mean? He goes, one of these days, that phone's going to ring, and it's all going to work. Everything that you're working for and towards and your goals and your writing and your ambitions and all of that, it's going to take one phone call, and it's going to be laid out for you, and it's, it's wow. going to work. And I said, Dad, you're saying that because you're my dad. He right. goes, no, I want you to remember this. That was the last thing he spoke to me. Wow. And I feel like he was telling me to keep going. To keep going, He yes. was telling me to keep going. Mm -hmm. And again, let's go back to an earlier statement. Never, ever, ever 
ever give mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. I won't. Right. I won't I feel. <laughs> I, I won't feel that I'm where this needs to be. Until Carla, in my heart of hearts, this is on a stage for everybody to hear, mm -hmm. for everybody to understand, to have hope and to have faith that it's it's a bigger community than just where we are here. It definitely is. It's for all mankind to right. understand right. because there is so much suffering mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there is a way to help alleviate it. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that we don't understand correct. and even though we have That's good correct. people in our lives right. and we're surrounded with good professionals and all of that, uh, there's still, if you believe, there's still another piece. I mean, That's there's correct. still another world That's and, right. and that, that can connect with us here mm -hmm. and, right. and the connection is the prayer, right? Yeah, if and we if we allow it, if we invite it in, That's I mean, correct. that's what, that's, that's right. what happens. And so, um, so I, I do think it's a wonderful message. Thank you. So what is life like for you now? It's healthy. Yeah, good. And the happiest I have ever been in my entire life because I believe I'm living life on a much deeper level now. I appreciate things more. I just, I have my sights on what it is I'm trying to do with my life mm -hmm. in furtherance of messages of having hope and faith. Mm -hmm. I continue to write, I continue to strive, and and again, meet wonderful people like yourself out in the world. <laughs> You're welcome. So 50 is fabulous. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> and having gone all through these things, it just, I, I feel like the whole world is, is, is just here now. And, and that's what I'm working for. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you very much. So um, last question. Yes. Okay, how would you define spirituality? Spirituality, I think, is finding your own destination, is finding your own journey through it. I think that it's, it's extremely personal and it's different for everyone. For me, it was the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. For other people, it's other deities, etc. But for me, that's just, just how I see it. Mm -hmm. I just, when I think of spirituality now, I think of the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Be what it means to that's you. That's what it means to me because I reached out and I was saved. Mm -hmm. Thank that's you. What I believe. Thank you. Thank you. This Thank was you. wonderful. It was terrific. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, it was wonderful to meet you, Elisa. It was a real pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Now, uh, you can learn more about Lisa on her website at lisasamia.com. And uh, we are going to have all uh, uh, her contact information up on the screen in just a moment. If you have any questions or ideas for the show, you can also contact me on my website at CarlaAugustin.com. I want to thank you for watching. This has been Spiritual Invitation. I am Carla Augustine inviting you to explore spirituality.